Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Healing Place Church Daily Devotional Podcast. Hey, we are so thrilled. We're excited to start a brand new book series with you. And so we are going to be walking through the Gospel of of Mark. Now, we've already gone through Matthew, but we're going to take this gospel here, uh, Mark, and we're just going to go for it. We feel like this is going to prepare your hearts and going to encourage you over the next few weeks. And so we want you to dive in with us. Now, first, the question is, who is Mark? Is, is Mark one of the disciples? Well, actually, no. Mark is actually a second generation disciple. He's in the Bible, though. Um, he actually was one of the people that went on missionary journeys with Paul, the apostle. And we know that Mark lived later on in life, um, was basically under the leadership of the Apostle Peter. So when we're reading through the Gospel of Mark, what we can see is that Peter's influence is so strong on this Gospel. Some have even said things like, this is really more the Gospel of Peter because there's so much insider information. And so later on, as Peter was nearing the end of his life, he had this, this, this disciple Mark, this guy that was with him to the end. And he said, you know what? Let's take some time and let's write a gospel. Let's get these, this information down. And you can tell as you're reading it that uh, so much of this is coming from Peter's perspective. And so let's go ahead and dive into chapter one and we're gonna meet John the Baptist. It says this in verse six. Talking about John the Baptist, it says, His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Yum. Uh, John announced, uh, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. Verse 8, this is important. He says, I'm baptizing you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Mark introduces us to this guy by the name of John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist just kind of pops up in Mark's gospel as a grown man, but we know from the gospel of Luke and the gospel of Matthew that there's more to this guy's story. John the Baptist actually is a, a relative of sorts to Jesus. And so we know that Jesus' mother Mary and, and, and John the Baptist's mother Elizabeth, they were relatives. And so John has this supernatural birth in the same way Jesus does. Now, Jesus is born of a virgin, but this is but John the Baptist isn't. And so John the Baptist's dad is actually a priest by the name of Zechariah. And we know that he was specifically chosen by God to do a super unique task. He was called to be the forerunner to the Messiah. Now, a little context here. So basically, in the Old Testament, God would raise up these prophets, and these prophets would come along and they would give these messages from God himself. And really starting with Moses, you can see there was really one or two major prophets in the nation of Israel at a time. But then you, when you got to the times of the kings, so starting with David on, you start seeing so many more prophets. God is raising up his people to speak on his behalf. But then you get to the end of the Old Testament and the voice of the prophets goes silent. In fact, they go silent for nearly 400 years. And so during this time in the first century, there was a lot of talk about the Messiah because one of the prophets of the Old Testament, the prophet Daniel, had prophesied and was given this vision and given a timeline for when the Messiah would actually arrive. And that timeline, according to the way the scholars were reading it, was actually the first century. So Jesus is coming into this picture right when everyone is looking for a Messiah. And out of nowhere, after 400 years of silence, there is this new prophet on the scene, this guy by the name of John the Baptist. And he was even prophesied in the book of Malachi. In the book of Malachi chapter 3, uh, it tell, God told them, he said, I'm going to send a forerunner. I'm going to send my messenger ahead of myself. In other words, hey, I'm not just going to show up unannounced. You ever have anybody that just shows up at your office or shows up at your house or shows up at, at a party unannounced and you're like, hey, what, do, what are you doing here? Um, God said, you know what? I'm not coming unannounced. I'm going to make sure that all of you are ready, that all of you are paying attention. And so God chooses and he raises up John the Baptist to go out into this wilderness and begin to work as a prophet. And he's calling people to baptism. Now, I want to point out something so interesting. This guy 
is prophesied about in the Old Testament. I don't know about you. I'm not in the Bible. Nobody's prophesied, you know, my arrival. But for 400 years, they were waiting for the arrival of this messenger. And here he is. And I want you to take a look at what he says about himself. He is in this moment where he realizes who he is. He knows the Messiah is just around the corner and that he has to um, prepare the hearts of the people for the Messiah when he gets here. And look what he says. He says, he is so much greater than me that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps on his sandals. And that just struck me. Just right off the bat as we start this new journey down the Gospel of Mark, understand this, that there are no one, there's no person, not even John the Baptist, no one is as great as Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. In fact, Mark's gospel is one of the major themes of his gospel is Jesus as the Son of God. John the Baptist sets the standard for us. He sets the approach for us that, you know what? As Christians, we are called, just like John the Baptist, to prepare the way for Christ. You know, you're called to prepare the way for Christ at your office, at your school, in your families, as you're raising your kids. You see, really, all ministry is this, preparing the way for Christ. But ministry is never about us. It's never about glorifying our name or making ourselves known. You know, I think about every single Sunday, there are guys in the parking lot, they're preparing the way. There there are men and women who stand at the doors and they greet. There are people who serve in kids. There are people who serve in production or on our worship team. Every single team, our cafe team, everybody that is serving, they're doing the work of John the Baptist. They're just preparing the way. They're not making it about them. And guess what? We all realize what John the Baptist did, that he's the only one that's worthy. He's the only one that is worthy of worship, and we're all just servants. And you know, I love what he says. He says, look, I'm going to baptize with water. But that is just a picture. It's just an image of something far greater. Jesus is going to come and he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. You know that word baptize, it means to be submerged or immersed. And John is saying, look, I'm going to, I can take your body (laughs) and I can put it under the water. The only thing I could submerge you in is water. But the Messiah, when he comes, he will do just as the prophet Joel announced. He will come and he will do more than just a water baptism. He will do a Holy Spirit baptism baptism. You see, the Old Testament prophets, they prophesied about this, that one day the Holy Spirit would not merely be around us, but the Holy Spirit would be in us. And this was the job of the Messiah. The Messiah was to come and he was to give us a new heart and forge a new covenant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you're walking through today, no matter what you're going through, remember these two things. One, You're called to be a forerunner for Christ. You are called to prepare the way. But then two, because of Christ, you have the power of the Holy Spirit, the living God inside of you. No matter what temptations you face, no matter what trials you face or struggles, no matter what you come against today, the Holy Spirit dwells in you because of the Messiah Jesus. And you can overcome anything. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm praying for strength for you as you, as you continue to, to walk through your day. But I want you to know this. This is going to be an incredible study. You don't want to miss it. I want, you to ch- I want to challenge you. Dial in for the remainder of this study. It's going to be worth it. I promise. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gospel of Mark. This is a wonderful gospel, Lord. He, as he studied under Peter, to, as, he, as he walked the streets with Paul, he saw so many amazing things, and we get to enjoy your holy word through him. And Lord, I just pray that every single person listening today, they would realize that they are little John the Baptist. They have a calling to prepare the way for your arrival. Jesus, we believe you're coming back, and your church is called to prepare the way for your arrival. Lord, we want to to, to, to introduce you to the world. And Lord, we just thank you that you baptize not merely with water, but with the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit's power dwells in us today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Lord, I just pray that every person today listening, every person watching, they would sense your spirit in a supernatural way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 